Hi everyone, welcome to IT Knowledge Base. Back again with the epic lecture of the NMAP Hacking Network series. This is a part one, NMAP Basics, where you will see in action how to install and their staples. I have separated this NMAP lecture into five parts for your better understanding. After the comprehensive lecture of this series, you will be able to confidently describe the NMAP and have confidence in how to use it in your network for internal and external security audits. Systems and network administrators also use NMAP to audit their routers, firewalls, open and close ports, and several other things. This series aims is to educate every individual who really wants to build a career in information and cybersecurity with immense pitch. Network auditing and scanning are a very important part of any security testing and audits and without them your penetration testing, vulnerability assessment or vulnerability scanning or ethical hacking will be incomplete. Network auditing or a scanning is vibrant if you wanted to know your network layout and its exposure from internal and external viewpoints. NMAP is the favorite of all time, especially in network scanning. If you want to enhance your career, you should start learning about the NMAP and get hands-on cloudy today. Okay, let's start and discuss some necessary structures of the NMAP and see the hands-on examples in action. Before we jump into the hacking network series with NMAP, let us understand the repudiation which is crucial and necessary here. The channel is formed for sharing information to help those excited geeks who really want to learn and do really something which is extraordinary in their field. All the techniques provided in this channel, IT knowledge base, are solely meant for educational purposes only. All the techniques taught here are covered in the secured workshop environment or with consent from a second party. If you are using any of those techniques for illegal purposes, IT knowledge base isn't be held responsible for possible lawful consequences. A swift overview of our lab configuration. We have a routed internal virtualized LAN in our lab atmosphere, which is a super safe and controlled environment all over. In this series, we will remain our approach ethical and projected. If you scan network that you don't have permission to, you can get in trouble and lawful consequences might occur. Only use NMAP within your laboratory or your lab environment with the consent of the receiving party. We conduct all the scanning practices within our lab network environment and this is safe to exercise willingly. We have an internal LAN consist of three routed IP subnets for simulation in the virtualization 10.0.2.0/24, Throughout this lecture, Kali Linux will be our primary platform for auditing. We normally targets and victimizes our internal network. We will focus on and talk about real scenario network auditing tactics. You will see how to audit any network from the eyes of red, blue and purple teaming viewpoint along with real scenario tactics. NMAP is preferred when deep network scanning or security audits are required. NMAP has an independent platform and can be run on different operating systems such as Windows, Mac, Linux and PSDs. It can discover the free ports, connected hosts, any loopholes or potential vulnerabilities in the network systems and detect all the services running on the hosts with the operating systems and versions. Consideration of NMAP Let's understand first the objectives of NMAP. What is NMAP? NMAP is short for Network Mapper. It is an open source Linux command line tool. NMAP is the most famous scanning tool used by penetration testers. It is an open source Linux command line tool that is used to scan IP addresses and ports in the network and detect installed applications on a network by sending packets and analyzing the following responses. NMAP is widely used in the hacking and cyber security world. NMAP allows network admins to find which devices are running on their network, discover open ports and services, and detect vulnerabilities. Gordon Leon wrote NMAP back in 1997 to help map an entire network easily and find its open ports and services. NMAP has become hugely popular, being featured in movies like The Matrix and the popular series of Mr. Robot. NMAP is a mighty tool that can be used for positive or negative purposes. Why use NMAP? NMAP can quickly recognize all the devices including servers, routers, switches, mobile devices, etc. on single or multiple networks. NMAP helps identify services running on a system 
including web servers, DNS servers, and other common applications. NMAP can also detect application versions with reasonable accuracy to help detect existing vulnerabilities. NMAP can also find the information about the operating systems running on devices. It can provide detailed information like operating system versions and make it easier to plan additional approaches during penetration testing. During security auditing and vulnerability scanning, you can use NMAP to attack systems using existing scripts from the NMAP scripting engine. NMAP has a graphical user interface called ZenMap. It helps you develop visual mapping of a network for better usability and reporting. Some frequently asked questions about NMAP. Question number one, is it safe to install NMAP and learn network scanning in your lab or home computer? And the answer is yes. And you can use it for your deep dive practice and learning. Question number two, is it safe to install and use on a work computer? And the answer is no. It's not a good idea to install NMAP on your work computer. Question number three, is it safe to install NMAP and use it on your production server? And the answer is yes, you could unless you are in the security monitoring team. Question number four, is it safe to install and use on a test server or virtual machine or some test environment? And the answer is it could be depending on who is asking and what is the purpose of installation. Virtualization is common in every environment today. You can isolate your test and production environment and fire up only in the isolated sandbox environment. Is NMAP safe to use? NMAP is a safe tool and it's also dependable software that's available for cybersecurity professionals. However, it's understandable that nothing is safe, even Windows and builds of Linux contact vulnerabilities. There may be some restricted environment where it's against the rules to install it. However, it's only a matter of policy that can be checked locally. Regardless, it's legitimate, safe, dependable and free for IT administrators, cybersecurity experts and IT professionals. Advantages of NMAP Many benefits of NMAP set it apart from other network scanning tools. To begin with, it's open source and free of charge. The other benefits include it can search subdomain and domain name systems queries. It can be used for extensive deep networking auditing of the network system. It can determine the nature of the service that the host is performing, like whether the host is a mail server or a web server and so on. With the help of NMAP scripting engine or NSE, interaction can be made with the target host. Okay, let's gear up tight to see all the commands one by one in this lecture. Now let's talk about the content covered in this lecture. In this lecture, we will cover installing NMAP on Linux systems. However, NMAP comes pre-installed in Kali Linux. We will see how to scanning a single target, scanning a multiple targets, scanning an IP address ranges, scanning an entire subnet, scanning a target list, scanning and excluding targets, and aggressive scans. Installing NMAP on Linux. In this section, we look how to install NMAP in Ubuntu Linux. You don't need to run a security distribution to use NMAP. You can install it on any Debian based system with the following command. Scanning a single target. Now we will go over a couple of basic scanning techniques. Be aware that a firewall in the network can possibly return false scan results because they detect your scan. This default NMAP scan will check against the thousand most used TCP IP ports. You can see three rows in the results, port, state and service. The port row obviously shows you the port number and the protocol. The state row shows you if the port is open or closed. And the service row shows you which service is associated with the port. This default scan is mostly used to get a first overview of a client. 
scanning multiple targets you can also go ahead and scan for multiple targets at the same time scanning an ip address range to scan a whole range of ip addresses use the following this automatically scans for all online hosts in this IP range. Scanning an entire subnet. This command is widely used. It allows you to scan a whole subnet using CIDR notation. Scan our target list. Now we can take this a step further and also use list to put our targets into. Create a target.txt file that includes two hosts, one per line. If we run the following command, nmap runs the default scan against those targets in the list. Scanning and excluding target. You can exclude the range of critical servers from a scan. If you know, for example, 192.168.11.1 is your router and you don't want to run your scan against it, use the following command. You can also exclude a whole range of IP addresses by specifying your critical server's IP ranges. Aggressive scan, you have to be a vigilant because it is easily detectable. This scan uses an assortment of scan options included in a single parameter dash capital A. Please note, as you can see, this returns a hefty lot of information. Ok, now wrap up this lecture. This lecture had better enough to get you our ongoing. I endorse you should build a lab and test out those basic commands which we have qualified. See what evidence you are able to gather and how to process it. Run scans against different targets and against different operating systems. That's all for the now. In part 2, I will show you some hands-on and talk about NMAP host discovery options. I will see you over there and I look forward to joining you through this lecture. Thank you for being here.
back again with very perspective content of nmap hacking network series part 2 after this complete hands on lecture you will familiar with nmap host discovery options and will be able to describe confidently as well as use it in your network for security auditing so to reiterate the purpose of making this series is to educate individuals who really want to build their career in information and cyber security okay let's start and discuss some necessary knowledge about the nmap and see the discovery's example in action command number 1 list scan the list scan lists each host of the network without sending any packets to the hosts themselves this method is useful when looking to find the dns names for specific targets you can also find how many usable hosts addresses are available in the specified subnet Command number two, no port scan. The no port scan option simply means that you don't run a port scan after host discovery is done. It only prints out the available hosts that responded to the discovery probes. You can also call this a ping scan. Command number 3 no ping scan the no ping scan skips the complete nmap discovery process nmap directly starts to run its default port scan which is 1000 most ports if it finds the target ip is up command number 4 tcp sin ping this scanning option sends an empty tcp packets with the sin flag attached to it the sin flag tells the remote system that you are attempting to connect to it if the port appears to be open the target host will start the second step of the three way tcp handshake by responding with an sin act tcp package This is especially useful for certain systems that block ICMP ping requests. TCP send discovery works on port 80 by default. Command number 5 TCP act ping This method is also useful for networks that block ICMP requests. It discovers hosts by responding to non-existent TCP connections to provoke a response from a target. If it finds our target is up, it runs our default port scans against it. TCP send discovery works on port 80 by default. command number 6 udp ping the udp ping sends udp packets to get a response from a target 
most networks firewall will block UDP requests if they are properly configured. Although it is worth a try to run it anyway. Command number 7 SCTP INET ping. The SCTP stands for Stream Control Transmission Protocol. It's mostly used to discover VoIP, voice over IP, IP telephony based systems. Command number 8. This sends a default ICMP ping to a target and checks if it replies. Usually, if a network is properly configured, devices are set up to not reply to ICMP requests. Command number 9. ICMP timestamping. Most systems are or should be configured to block ICMP echo ping. It is possible though that they still allow ICMP timestamp pings. So this is always a good option to try. Now let's first confirm that ICMP ping is blocked by the firewall. Then run the NMAP with the timestamp flag to check whether the target host is alive or not. Command number 10, ICMP address mask ping. This address mask ping also uses an alternative ICMP request to provoke a response from a target. Another option to possibly bypass a firewall that is blocking default ICMP requests. Command number 11, IP protocol ping. The IP protocol ping allow you to send packets with specified protocols to the target. However, if you do not specify any particular protocol, the default protocol ICMP, IGMP and IP in IP will be used. To specify a protocol, use nmap capital P O switch and so on. Command number 12, ARP ping. This is the fastest method of discovering host on a network as of now. The biggest advantage is that ARP requests cannot be blocked by hosts on a network. No matter if there is a firewall involved or not, you have to have access to the local network though. Command number 13, Traceroute. You probably came across the Traceroute or Tracert on Windows command before. This is the same. It traces a route to the designated target. If you run it against google.com or any external domain, the Traceroute output would be much longer.
command number 14 force reverse dns resolution with the dash capital r tag you can import this and nmap will try to resolve the dns names of all the specified ip addresses be aware though the capital r option will decrease your scan performance tremendously Command number 15. Default DNS resolution is only used against hosts that appear online. You can disable DNS resolution altogether if you do not need it. This will increase your scan performance and decrease your scan time tremendously. Command number 16, Alternative DNS Lookup. While not very often used in the field, this option allows you to tell Nmap to use the host system's DNS server for the DNS lookup. This scan slows down your scan time even more than the normal reverse DNS lookup. Command number 17, manually specify DNS servers. Look at is used to manually specify a DNS server for your NMAP scan. This could be used if you want to avoid your DNS requests appearing in the local DNS server. Okay, now wrap up this lecture. This lecture had better enough to get you our ongoing. I endorse you should build a lab and test out those basic commands which we have qualified. See what evidence you are able to gather and how to process it. Run scans against different targets and against different operating systems. Alright, that's all for the now. I hope you have learned something here for sure. In the next part of the series, I will talk about advanced NMAP commands. With minimum theory and retain our focus on hands on specifically. I will see you over there. I look forward to join you through this lecture and thank you for being here. Back again with very skillful content of NMAP Hacking Network Series Part 3. To my enthusiastic fellow security testers or hackers, this is the time to tackle the third part of the NMAP lecture series. After covering NMAP basics and NMAP host discovery, we are going to look at some more advanced NMAP commands. Sometimes it is necessary to perform scans that will do something else than the TCP scan that NMAP is doing by default. Those more advanced commands are used to detect exotic services or to evade the file. Firewalls. After this complete hands-on lecture, you will be familiar with advanced NMAP commands options and will be able to describe them confidently as well as use them in your network for security auditing and penetration testing certifications lab as well. So to reiterate, the purpose of making this series is to educate individuals who really want to build their career in information and cyber security. Really scanning the network or network security testing is a very critical part and it's merely based on your successful IT security certifications, penetration testing and auditing. Okay, let's start and discuss some necessary knowledge about the NMAP and see the discoveries examples in action. First, let's have an overview of all the advanced NMAP commands. All these are advanced and somehow comprehensive and the most useful scanning switches. We always use tag with the small letter S to represent a scanning switch along with the capital letter which represents your scan type. We will go through all of these switches one by one to get the most benefits out of them. Number one, TCP SYN scan. This scans for the thousand most used TCP ports by sending SYN packages to a target and awaiting a response. This NMAP command is more on the stealthy side of things because it does not try to connect to the target. You might be able to avoid being detected when using this command. Please note that I have said might here because it highly depends on whether the network has an IDS intrusion detection system in place or not. Number two, TCP connect scan. The TCP connect scan can be run without sudo, without the root privileges, 
it attempts to establish a plain connection to the target host. This command is noisy and you have to be cautious to use it. Number 3 UDP scan The UDP scan is a valuable asset for scanning services that uses UDP like DNS and DHCP. I always run a UDP scan to find all the services that don't use TCP. Number 4 TCP Null Scan The TCP Null Scan sends packets without TCP flags. This method is used to get the firewall to respond to the scan. Number 5 TCP Fin Scan The TCP Fin Scan is used to get a TCP acknowledged response from the target. This is just another way to get around a firewall and trigger a response from the target host. Number 6 XMAS scan This funny sounding scan, a code from Nmap's official documentation, sets the fin, push and urgent flags, lighting the packets up like a Christmas tree, describes this scan pretty well. This is used to provoke a response from a target host behind a firewall. It's obvious that this is a noisy approach. Number 7 TCP ACK scan the TCP ACK scan is used to check whether a system is protected by a firewall. If no RST or reset response is given from the target system, NMAP assumes that the target system is filtered. If the target system returns an RST response, it will be set as unfiltered. Ports being filtered is an indication that the system is behind a firewall. Unfiltered ports are most likely allowed through the firewall through specific rules. Number 8. IP protocol scan the IP protocol scan shows all protocols that are supported by the target. This option is mostly used to determine what kind of scans you will run against the target system based on its protocols. You can find a list of all protocols here. Number 9 SCTP Cookie Echo Scan This scan is more advanced SCTP scan. It's a pretty silent way of scanning because it drops packets containing cookie echo chunks on open ports. But it does send an abort response if the port is closed. This scan is pretty silent although it still can be detected by a well configured IDS. Number 10 Idle Scan This scanning method runs a completely blind TCP port scan against the target. There are no packets sent from your own IP address. This technique also uses a so-called zombie host to gather information about the target. You basically specify a zombie host on the network that will send the packet for you, making it hard for IDS to detect your scanner. It's a very stealthy scan because you don't use your own IP address. You use a zombie in computer term or another computer's IP address. First, we must find a good zombie host who closely connects with us. So you should do a port scan and an operating system detection so NMAP can find the IP ID. You would do it like this. NMAP uses a zombie machine for port scanning. Then you find a line that say IP ID sequence generation. If it says incremental or broken little endian incremental, you hit the jackpot. And you have a zombie you can use. If it says anything else, you should try looking for another IP or website. After you finish the first step, all you need to do is NMAP command with the tag SL switch. Then it should display the info and that's how you do it. I really like this method to scan and use it quite often as it is really stealthy. But this scan does not work all the time due to some congestion or constraints. Number 11 is spoofing and decoy scan. When we are scanning machines that are not ours, we often want to hide our IP addresses or our identity. Obviously, every packet must contain our source addresses or else the response from the target system will not know where to return to. The same applies to spoofing our IP when using NMAP. We can spoof our IP address with the tag capital S switch in NMAP, but as a result, any response and any info we are trying to gather will return to the spoofed IP. 
Not very useful if we are scanning for information gathering. A better solution is to obfuscate our IP address. In other words, bury our IP address among many IP addresses so that the network security admin can't pinpoint the source of the scan. Nmap allows us to use decoy IP addresses so that it looks like many IP addresses are scanning the target. We can do this by using the capital D switch. This scan will use three decoy IP addresses but also use our own address as well. In this way, we get responses and the info on the target and the admin of the system sees a scan coming from four systems simultaneously. In this way, he can't pinpoint the true source of the scan easily. Number 12, gathering version information. When Nmap runs a port scan, it retrieves the port information, open, close, or filtered, and then gives us the default service that is running on that port. As one can run any service on any port, that may not be adequate information. If our attack requires a particular service on a particular port, gather the default information may not be enough. We need to know what service is actually running on that port, not the default service. For instance, knowing that port 80 is open and running at HTTP, HTTP is good to know, but if our attack is specific to Apache, then if the target has Microsoft IIIS running on that port, it won't work. We often need the service on the port. Nmap has a feature that interrogates the service running on each port scan. It can be used with the tag small s capital V switch. Number 13, reason or tag tag reason. By default, an Nmap output indicates whether a host is up or not, but does not describe the discovery test that the host responded to. It can be useful to understand the reason why a port is marked as open, closed or filtered and why the host is marked as alive. This can be done using the tag tag reason flag. Number 14, using a list. Many times we want to scan a list of IP addresses and not an entire subnet. We can use any text editor and create a list of IP addresses and feed it to Nmap. Here I am using Nano which is built into Kali or you can use any text editor whatever you like to put together a list of IP addresses you want to scan. Then use this list of the IP address in Nmap rather than having to retype these IP addresses each time. Number 15, output to a file. If we are scanning multiple IP addresses, we probably want to save the output to a file for later references. Although Nmap has many ways and formats to save the output, I prefer the tag small o capital N switch with the name of the file you want to save the output to. Here I have used a file name portscan.txt. Nmap is one of those tools that every hacker must master to be proficient at this trade. With this lecture, we have advanced our Nmap skills to another step, but we still have much to learn, so keep coming back, my novice hackers. Now wrap up this lecture. This should give you a good of some advanced Nmap commands. How often you use those Nmap commands in the real world highly depends on the scenario. Sometimes simple Nmap scans are enough to detect open ports on most systems. Alright, that's all for the now. I hope you have learned something here for sure. In the next part of this series, I will talk about Nmap scripts engine with minimum theory and retain our focus on hands-on specifically. I will see you over there. I look forward to joining you through this lecture and thank you for being here. Back again with very incitement content of Nmap hacking network series part four. This is the final part of this Nmap hacking network series. Now that you know how to work with advanced Nmap commands as shown in my previous video of Nmap Hacking Network Series Part 3, we now can go ahead and tackle the next topic. In this lecture, we will go more deeply into the Nmap and explore that it is not just a port scanner that only scans ports on the target machine, but contains a Nmap scripting engine or NSC which has pre-made Nmap scripts to dig further into the system. Examples of NAC scripts include the Nmap scripting engine extends the capabilities of Nmap enabling it to perform various operations and report the results of Nmap scripts with regular output.
Some examples of NSE scripts include Enhanced Network Lookup, which includes Whois Lookup, Traceroute, Samba File Share Discovery, and Additional Protocols Query. Advanced Version Detection Capabilities. This includes complex probing to detect the versions of target. Brute Force can discover the authentication mechanism in the different services and brute force it with a NMAP script. Vulnerability detection checks for the vulnerability of services according to their functionalities and versions. Malware detection having the capabilities to discover trojans and warm backdoor. Vulnerability exploitation exploits the significant and common vulnerabilities on the go. These NMAP scripts are written in the LUA program. This language and named with the extension .nse. This means you can even download a third-party custom-made scripts that can run with NMAP. In Linux and Unix, the default storage location where all the NMAP scripts reside in the forward slash user, forward slash share, forward slash NMAP, forward slash scripts subdirectory. While in the Windows, the default location is C program files slash nmap slash script subdirect. Please note by default version scanning tag s capital V also executes all NAC scripts in the version category. The tag capital A command line option executes the tag s capital C command line option which is safe and intrusive categories. NSE scripts overview. The basic syntax for executing an NSE script is you type nmap space tag tag script space script name space host IP address or FQDN. There are various scripts to run with tag tag script default. These scripts are the default set and are run when using the tag S capital C or tag capital A option rather than listing scripts with tag tag script. This category can also be specified explicitly like any other using tag tag script equals default. Second script is tag tag script external. Scripts in this category may send data to a third party database or another network resources. An example of this is who is IP which makes a connection on to who is server to learn about the address of of the target. There is always the possibility that operators of the third party database will record anything you send to them, which in many cases will include your IP address and the address of the target. Most scripts involve traffic strictly between the scanning computer and the client. Any that do not are placed in this category. Tag tag script discovery. These scripts try to actively discover more about the network by querying public registries, NMAP enabled devices, directory services, and the like. Example include HTML title or obtain the title of the root path of the website, SMB enumeration share, enumerate Windows shares, and SNMP sys description extracts system details via SNMP. Tag tag script safe. Scripts that were not designed to crash services use large amount of network bandwidth or other resources or exploit security holes are categorized as safe. These are less likely to offend remote administrators, though as with all other NMAP features, we cannot guarantee that they won't ever cause adverse reaction. Most of these perform general network discoveries. Examples are SSH host key or retrieves an SSH host key and HTML title. It grabs the title from a web page. Scripts in the version category are not categorized by safety but any other script which are not in safe should be placed in intrusive. Tag tag script vulnerability. These scripts check for specific known vulnerabilities and generally only report result if they are found. Example include real VNC authentication bypass and AFP path vulnerabilities. Tag tag script authentication. These scripts deal with authentication credentials or bypassing them on the target system. Examples include X11 access, FTP anonymous, and Oracle enumeration user. A script that use brute force attack to determine credential are placed in the brute category instead. Tag tag script broadcast. Scripts in this category typically do discovery of hosts not listed on the command line by broadcasting on the local network. Use the new targets scripts argument to allow these scripts to automatically add the host they discover to the NMAP scanning queue. Tag tag script exploit. These scripts aim to actively exploit some vulnerabilities. Examples include JDWP execution and HTTP shellshock. 
Script number one, default NSE scan. A default script is a group of scripts that run a bunch of individual analysis scripts at once. They are used to expose the necessary information related to the operating systems like the workgroup name, the NetBIOS name, FTP bounce check, FTP anonymous login checks, SSH checks, DNS discovery and recursion, clock SQ, HTTP method, RPC info, VNC info, SSL check and etc. Script number two, external scan. An external script is a group of scripts that that runs multiple individual NMAP scripts at once and checks the access and status of the services running on the target by using external testing services, which includes DNS discovery, HTTP cross domain policy, XSS database searches, CVSS checks for known vulnerabilities, TOR node checks, SMTP open relay check, showdown searches, geolocation of IP addresses, and etc. Script number three, discovery scan. Discovery scripts are ideal when you need to have as much information as possible about your remote target. This script might take plenty of time to complete. This category of NMAP scripts is used to perform banner grabbing, CICS information, Citrix enumeration, DNS zone check, HTTP user agent testing, ICAP information, MS SQL configuration, SMB enumeration, etc. Script number four, safe scan. A safe script is a group of less intrusive NSE scripts which makes low noise while used against the remote system. They are used to perform DNS enumeration, DSCP discoveries and recursion, HTTP index page finding, finding software versions, HTTP trace, IP forwarding checks, IRC information, NFS mounting and etc. Script number five, vulnerability scan. Vulnerability scanning is also a part of NSE scripts, which are used to check and find some of the most common vulnerabilities on your target host. The type of vulnerabilities it can find include HTTP slow loris, Apache range DOS header, FTP bounce, anonymous logins, XSS, shellshock, SQL injection, and other type of CVEs. I personally use this NMAP script all the time as it often discovered vulnerabilities for me in the past. Script number six, authentication scan. An authentication script scan is a group of scripts that are used to check the authentication mechanism of different services, which includes AJP login checks, user enumeration through brute force, X11 server access, SSH authentication, VNC login bypass, MySQL users and hashes, WordPress user enumeration and default login checks, etc. Script number seven, broadcast scan. The broadcast script runs multiple NMAP scripts at once, which checks for the queries of multicast routing protocols, resolve the host name, check for host on the local network, triggers wake on LAN, checks for Awahi DOS, search for SQL servers, EIGRP discoveries, etc. Script number eight, exploit scan. This type of scan has one of the most potent NMAP scripts as it can be able to exploit potential services running on the remote host. It can exploit VS FTPD backdoors, HTTP file upload exploits, light speeds, source code downloads, SMB exploitation, Unreal IRCD backdoor, and other type of CVEs. Script number nine, run multiple NSE scripts. You can also run multiple NSE scripts at once by using the following syntax. The primary purpose of running multiple scripts is to perform the recursive function or to double check to validate the result if it is genuinely positive or a false positive. The reason for this would be to confirm that the HTTP slow loris vulnerability really exists, then exploit it in the same run. You can also run the individual scripts by selecting them manually from the default install location as mentioned at the start of the lecture. Script number 10, third party NSE scripts. This is all time favorite third party NSE script are two scripts that are not included in a basic NMAP installation. The scripts are NMAP vulners and vulscan. Both of those scripts are third party scripts and they both use CVE record to improve NMAP version detection capability. The scripts will use this information to show you known CVEs that are exploitable. I will quickly show you how to install and how to use them so you can play around with them. First, you need to navigate to the NMAP script folder. From here, you need to clone the NMAP Wolner's GIT repository. 
Make sure you are still inside the nmap script folder. Also clone the GIT repository for wallet scan. And finally update the wallet scan database. As with the other NMAP scripts, the usage is pretty similar. Tag as capital V is scanning for version information, which is crucial for vulners to work. But be watchful, you have to note here this is a folder. And don't forget to type forward slash at the end of the NMAP vulners. Using Volscan, the syntax to use Volscan is pretty similar, but be watchful, you have to note here this is a folder and don't forget to type forward slash at the end of the Volscan. Of course, you can also combine nmap vulners and volscan into one command as shown in the example earlier in this video on script number 9. And finally update the nmap NSA script database. The nmap script database should be frequently updated to make sure to always have the most up to date database scripts available. Wrap up this lecture. The nmap scripting engine gives much more power to nmap than its usual use case of being a port scanner. The nmap scripts provide more enhanced and interesting results which can be used to collect and analyze more information about the remote host. The only drawback of NSE is that it takes more time in providing the results while on the other hand, the advantage is to easily run multiple scripts at once without tangling into hundreds of scripts. Alright, that's all for the now. I hope you have learned pertinently Charmer NMAP usage and tips and tricks here for sure. This four part of the NMAP hacking network series verily was not a tentative discussion. However, you may find it very much whistleblower, hands-on, practical, informative in your future information and cybersecurity learning and certifications. We have successfully completed the NMAP hacking network series hands-on training, which comprises up to four parts. I emphasize to you all that if you want to get a master's in the NMAP network scanning tool, watch my complete NMAP training series repeatedly until you get familiar with all the switches and syntaxes. My recommendations to you all is to design your own virtual penetration testing lab and get egregious your understanding. Undeniably, I have tied up all my training videos with hands-on movements only. So you will be able to get benefits if you are going to prepare yourself for basic to most advanced information and cybersecurity certifications. Thank you for being here. I will see you in my upcoming admirable video content. I look forward to joining you through this lecture. If you want to see more awesome training content, make sure you click that subscribe button. Click it so you don't miss it. Thank you.